G'day and welcome to Prop Maker. This is the channel that helps you make stuff, restore stuff and repair stuff. I'm Raf and this week we're going to continue on with our Fishtails pinball machine from Williams. It's almost completed. There's only a couple more things to do. There's like a um, like a couple of coils that are a little bit dodgy, a few wires that are exposed and I just want to clean that up. But before I put it on the market, I need to make this a little bit more attractive over other machines that might be out there in the marketplace and try and make it a bit more saleable that someone would choose this machine over another version of it. And the way I'm going to do that is through colour. Roll the thing. We're getting very close to completing this restoration. We've done a lot of stuff. We've got the play field all done up to the nines. We've got the fish working up the back. Uh, we've repaired all the boards. We've repaired everything that's actually not working in the play field. And now I'm just getting it ready for sale. But what I really need to do is try and give this machine a bit of an edge over others. And the way I think I can do that and make it a bit more appealing is spending a little bit of money, a little bit of effort, and replace this orange screen here with a color one. So here you can see the original display of the fishtail straight out of the way it looks like when it comes out of the factory. It's just orange. Sorry about the flicker. That's my camera refresh rate working with the LEDs. And uh, you can see that it's got some animations that happen and they play throughout the game. Like, they're pretty cool. Um, they keep the game pretty exciting and, uh, and looking good. But then uh, I played the one out at South Australian Pinball and Arcade, which is this one, and you can see that the display at the back was colour. Now... When you switch this machine on, it actually has the tell which says that it's a pin to DMD. And back to my original one here, it just makes it look really tired and really old. And I think that um, it would actually pay to actually get hold of that modification. So I looked into pin to DMD and found it's an, basically a project for virtual pinball machine makers and those virtual pinball machines are pretty cool i'll um cut the one now and you can see this one was actually made by my friend sean uh, perslow over in the states and his is pretty slick and you can see that there's a uh, dmd up in the back of his machine but virtual pinball machines allow you to play virtual versions of pinballs actually on the full-size tables. Okay, so where to next on my fishtails pinball? I really want to get it set up so I can uh, get it ready for selling. I, you know, my end goal is to basically finish this restoration of fishtails and then move on to the next pinball. And hopefully within that next jump, I'll get my dream pinball machine that I've been looking for for years. Um, so, fingers crossed, I need to maximise my return on investment for the fishtails. So I'm looking to get top dollar for that. I have put in a lot of hours in making it look as good as I can possibly get it to look. I've got all the functions working and I've got all the plastics and things uh, that were worn pretty much replaced. There's a couple tiny little wear marks in the boat part of the play field. I didn't want to spend another $300 on a tiny um, aspect of, of the, of the uh, play field because really the damage to it is very minimal, very small and I'll show you what that is right now while I'm talking. So now that I've thought about all of the things that I've got, the next thing is actually looking at modifications. Now there are modifications out there for our fishtails like things like fishing lures and I've seen someone actually put an entire fishing rod into the play field, a real one, 
um, fish. They've got basically models of fish jumping out of the play field. There's a, an actual monster fish whose lie, eyes light up um, when, that, when that function hits. All of those things are very, very cool, but they're very, very expensive. And I could sure um, try and model something up in, uh, in my 3D programs and print something and try and put some LEDs in it, and that's fine. Probably do want to do that for my dream pinball machine later down the track but for this one i just want to um, now that i've spent all the effort in restoring it i just want to add a couple of extra good features and then move it uh, as fast as i can so i can hopefully get hold of my dream pinball if anyone's asking about what that dream pinball is my favorite pinball machine of all time is actually star trek tng um, the next generation so i've dreamed of owning that since I first laid my eyes on that machine and if I do get that machine I will be making some modifications to my version of that machine so um, hopefully you're going well in my long-term plan you'll get to see those videos when I make them um, but for now I want to sell this Fishtails machine. So the one modification I've looked at is to actually include uh, or trade out from the play uh, from the the pinball its amber coloured uh, DMD or LED display that's at the back of the uh, machine in, in the back box and trade that out for a colour version. Now there are many commercial versions of those. Uh, on the market but they're all very very expensive especially for me here in Australia so I went off and I'm you know went off looking for an alternative and I came across an alternative that was created by two people uh, who are part of the virtual pinball community so up on uh, pinball universe I discovered a thing called pin to dmd and it's a project that was put together by lucky one someone called lucky one and another person called steve 45 who are very very clever at what they do and they've built the building blocks of using relatively inexpensive parts that you can buy from places like aliexpress and actually put all of that together wrote some firmware for it and you can use that as a color display not only in your virtual pinball machines but also in real ones and there's a whole list of pinball machines that uh, sorry of uh, uses for this uh, and hardware that it works in so pin to dmd all of this information is on uh, their website at pintodmd.com and you can see that down here they have a, a vast array of hardware that it supports and this basically includes the actual real pinball so there we have williams we have stern we have data east more williams some gottlieb capcom everybody is here so they've actually done their homework and actually worked out how to actually make this stuff work with real machines as well as the virtual pinballs so then they start talking about the hardware and where you need to source it. I, um, I didn't opt for this approach. I ended up taking a smart bomb approach and actually purchasing one from a supplier friend of ours. And, um, but um, I was very interested in how they actually created this because I do want to actually build one of these from scratch at some point. But because I need to move the, the fishtails quickly, I ended up just purchasing uh, a board from... Uh, a friend who actually made um, made a whole uh, stack for himself. Now, when you buy this, uh, sorry, when you uh, make one of these, and even if you buy it, you still have to pay a restitution um, back to the developers for uh, actually um, for their actual hard work. So they've they actually had to do that because commercial vendors and stuff were taking advantage of the project and that just wasn't fair. So they, um, 
they've even insisted there's some ways that you can actually donate to their charities of their choosing and uh, and they'll be fine with that too. But generally it's about 20 euro to actually get your hardware working once you've built it. Um, so that's to get your activation key and to basically um, get the whole thing working with their firmware. So very, very exciting and very, very cool. So you basically look at this you can see that these displays are just matrices of or matrices of LEDs now this uh, these panels are normally usually the panels that you see as very very small parts of those giant television screens that you see at uh, venues like um, big stadiums and stuff like that when you see a giant TV it's actually not one giant piece of machinery it's actually made up of lots of tiny little panels that look like this and those little panels are available on, on AliExpress quite cheaply um, and there's there's a multitude of sizes and shapes and forms what we're interested in is this P 2.5 uh, and that's the actual dot pitch or how wide the uh, the LEDs are apart from each other. And we're, we were after a, a 160 by 80 and you have two of those and it creates the same size panel that's on my fishtails. So you just purchase a couple of these as you can see. Not very much at all in Australian money. $16.70 for one of those panels. Um, which is unbelievable for the amount of tech that you get for your for your dollar it's just crazy anyway so jumping back to the site you would then go back and then you would start building out all of the pieces that you need to build out of this so you could then jump over uh, and have a look you need some circuit boards made so they've even taken that part out of the equation by allowing you to download um their printed circuit board template files which you would just jump over and go onto a site like PCB Way here now they're not a sponsor of my podcast or sponsor of prop maker in any way shape or form but just mentioning it out there you you might want to come on board PCB Way I do do a lot of stuff with printed circuit boards anyway rather than gratuitously plugging for a sponsor uh, I will say that all you need to do is basically um, in uh, this site is we want to get an assembled um, assembled one so you would look for PCB assembly then you want to go to um, look on to here where are we assembly we want to PCB assembly specialist we want a turnkey version and then what you end up once you actually upload this the the files that are, um, are actually where is this so I'm going to do this let's do it okay so this is where you would get your instant quote so I'm going to the instant quote I'm then going to quick order a PCB and then add the files that I download from the pin to DB uh, pin to DMD website and I'm going to click that and upload it it will upload and as it's uploading basically what's happening is that within that file that you download um, from pin to D uh, pin to DMD's website which basically when you do click on it here it actually takes you to a github um, and that github actually takes you in and there's all the different uh, types of displays that you can make with their files and they've taken all the guesswork out so I've chosen this 128 by 32 which is the same size as my fishtails and I then chucked that into uh, into here so they've actually now got a list of exactly what I require and I could change things like the color of the board. All these things can happen on PCB way. And then then you uh, also want to tick the assembly service. And I want to, you know, order uh, a minimum of, of whatever the minimum is. Which is the reason why I actually stopped getting uh, my own printed. Because 
I realized very quickly that with the shipping, it wasn't really cost effective for me to actually print one. Um, it would be more cost effective for me to make five, but I don't need five. So talking to my mate Russell at, at South Australian Pinball and Arcade, he said that he had a friend who was already making some. And luckily for me, he had a couple of spares. So I bought one of those spares off him and he set it up for me uh, for fishtails. So what does it look like? Well, here it is. So we have our, I'll just pull the line up a bit. So we have our display. And if we have a look at the back of this display, you can see that the actual plugs have actually been put on here, which pretty much match exactly what the normal DMD on my fishtails would have. Um, and then it's got some basic controls here for resetting things, um, basically to the menu system for the firmware, how do I reflash it, all these things. And then there's the data cable, which comes from uh, the dot matrix uh, display board within the pinball and plugs into here. So power goes into this plug, data goes into this plug, and then we end up with our dot matrix display here. Now the problem that we've got is that that display being quite modern actually is problematic because and the problem is is that that is actually uh, requires five amps um, as a minimum to actually have it uh, have it run whereas the old uh, DMD uh, only required a 12 volt rail of one amp but it also had other voltages going into that board which were quite significant. But that this new board doesn't actually need those other voltages. So I needed to figure out how the power is going to work and how I can protect that from getting this extra voltage being charged through it. And so when I was actually uh, purchased this, I was sent by the guy who made it um, this picture. And this picture, as you can see, is not the best in regards to detail. If I try to zoom in. All right, now I can zoom in. All right. So all I was sent when I got that uh, display was this image here. And as you can see, it's got a couple of hints. It says remove these fuses for some reason. Use this jumper, and I do have one here. It's a little jumper that basically is, um, it allows you to run some cables through here, and when it closes up, it actually pinches those two cables together with this piece of metal, and then it basically joins the two wires together. So it's saying here on the screen that these two wires should be pinched, sorry, uh, joined or jumped together. And that's all we need to do. And that's all I had to go on for, uh, for this. And as you can see, I can't really zoom in. There's not much resolution to these images. So what did I need to do? I needed to actually go and look at the board. That's what I ended up doing. So, uh, basically, uh, I'm going to cut over to going back to the machine and I'm going to try and identify these two wires. But I also want to understand what's actually try what they're trying to achieve here. So, it looks like this wire is um, basically both the same color. But I'm just going to jump back over to my browser and have a, a quick double check of the schematic and here is the schematic of the dot matrix controller so if we look at this these are the two plugs that seem to be in the photo j606 and j604 and if we jump back into the picture just here so 606 is here 604 is here and 
I'm trying to identify what these are. These look like the grey and yellow wires, which meant that this one's then going into number two, and this one looks like it's going up near the top somewhere. So looking at the schematic, though, if it's number two here, um, or the second, sorry, not number two, but the second pin from the end, which would be pin seven, out from the board, it would be coming through here and there would be 12 volt coming from pin 7 and also if we look at this one up near the top pin 7 and 6 are actually jumped together and both those ones near the top are also 12 volts they're coming from the 12 volt so we're taking the wire from here and the wire from here and we're joining them together which basically will allow us to add two 12 volt rails that are both grounded by the same uh, thing, which means that we can get a higher ampage out of that 12 volts because there's multiple sources for that 12 volts coming in to that wire. So that's what's actually happening. So now we know what's actually going on. We can go and cut over to the actual uh, machine itself and we're going to jump those two wires and we're going to then start installing our color DMD let's go to it Right, so we're grabbing these two wires and we're going to put this little jumper in place. And what we'll need is a pair of pliers, if we can put just a pair of pliers, and that will squash down those two leads. So it's ready to be um, squashed down now and I'm going to just do it. It's not the best quality plug, but anyway. <sighs> Okay, so why are we removing fuses from the board? We're taking our 12 volt rail from down here from our pin uh, 7 and 8 and, uh, and our pin 7 from here. And if you can see here, it actually says it's the 12 volt line. And that's the only bit of voltage we need to get through to the pin DMD in order for it to work. So those two fuses that we're removing on the board are these two fuses here. So what happens here is that in comes some, I think, AC current, and then it goes through the fuses down to what are called bridge rectifiers, which turns, both of them turn uh, AC current to DC current. And one ends up with what looks like a 100 volt rail, and the other one's a 400 volt rail, and they get broken down into various voltages around here so you can see there's there's um minus 113 volts here minus 125 what looks like 92 volts there so without really knowing what i'm doing all i'm doing is trying to figure out why you would remove these two fuses and i think it's just to protect the board so once we chop these out of the equation there's no voltage going through here or here and therefore nothing will actually land anywhere near these plugs with these high voltages 
so that uh, when we go to plug it down into our pin to DMD, there's no high voltages that can uh, just blow things up or burn things out. They were just in only finger time. Just connect these cables. And we should be able to pull the DMD out. It's actually glass, it's pretty cool. Put this over here. And with the new one, to go in to compare the both, they look cool. it's a little tiny bit thinner. But before this one goes in, I'm going to give that a wipe. bit mucky. into DMD and straight into the same spot.
it's keyed just and the plug is keyed so you can't put it into the wrong spot and the data cable pin one is over here at this end and the number one cable is always signified on a ribbon cable with the red line so moment of truth I'm going to put this back in. There we go. This is shut this. And oh, what do we got? We got the key in the way. Let's just see. Let's just see it go. There we go. Now it's looking promising. Let's start again. Let's just wash the screen. Wow, that's all right. We have colour. We'll film that again tonight, I think. Well, on first impressions, it's looking pretty good. So, uh, I'm pretty happy with the way it's turned out. And can't wait to see it at night, which uh, I'm going to uh, show you right now. I'm going to time lapse to the future. And here it is. So, in all of its glory, with a full LED play field and back box and fish and now with a pin to DMD looks fantastic and yeah that's my high score there <laughs> but it's looking fantastic and I hope to put this up for sale shortly so stay tuned to find out exactly how much I sold this machine for. Anyway, if you uh, like these videos, like and subscribe, and you can help me out by sharing this to as many of your friends as possible. And um, if you know anybody who's into pinball or into making things, repairing things, just uh, give me a shout out and share the link. Anyway... I think it's time to bid you a farewell. Thanks for watching. And you know what to do. Roll the thing.